go from very, very bad to just very bad. <laughs> what is that about, you know? How do you keep from doing that on a continual improvement cycle? You can easily go inching forward from very, very bad to very what, what, what can take you out of that, 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 that track? Greg, any ideas of what, what you would do if you really want to break out and, and be good and not just very bad? How would you, how would you go about kind of doing that? Um. Take your own organization that you're in now. Something is not good. It's terrible. What, what do you and you want to you want to be up with the, you know, with what's really good? What do you do? What would anybody do? I mean, you have to innovate and be convincing that um, any idea is a good one. I mean, if you believe it's a good one. Yeah. What What is it? Convey benefits. And, so one fundamental question I'd ask you is, so what is, what's good? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an idea. Other places and other standards and, right? So the first question, I suppose, is what is good, right? You want to be good. How do we go from, you know, how do we know that we're not just very bad? Don't know that, yeah. So, Bill, a question for you. You know, I think management often is uh, tempted to talk about sustainability in terms of good versus bad. And to a certain extent, you're also talking about it here. I like to steer people in the direction of, you know, better or not quite as good. Well, and it's really about, regardless of what you're doing, it's about having a lower impact on the environment yeah. and society over time, regardless of what you're doing. So, let's say you're a company that manufactures something that's truly toxic but necessary. Very bad, right? But at the same time, if that company makes improvements over time and has a lower impact on the environment and society, is that not a good thing? Well, you know, it's you know, here's the challenge. I think, and it's it's not it's a it's a good point to be raising. The challenge is that you're in. A, let's take safety. That's a classic. You look, because the reason that it's a classic is because there's lots of, there are metrics out there that are comparable across companies. You know what the safety rates are, how many people are dying, how many people are injured. All those are recorded by OSHA. You can go to an industry and you can look at all its peers and you can see some that are really terrific. Now, uh, you know, you can try to assess whether they're being honest about this reporting and so, sometimes you get the question, but generally, you know, you get a sense, yeah, these guys, we can understand how they're approaching it and this is the result they got. Yeah, that's probably credible. On the other hand, there's others in the same industry that are terrible, and they're very bad. And I wouldn't hesitate to say, these guys are very bad. If, you know, so many people die every year, so many people are injured every year, and in this class, it's not a, there's no excuse. Exxon, for example, Exxon Mobil, one of the top safety programs in the world. Why? Because they, you know they suffered lots of problems in the past, but then they you know they understood this and they really put a priority on it and have done a, a superb job. BP not so great. Certainly, we know a lot about that. So there are ways of what I'm saying. There are ways of benchmarking, looking at what other people are doing to say, yeah, am I am I am I up here or am I just deluding myself and saying that I'm I'm good just because I've improved a little? Sure, improvement is where you want to go. You don't want to go the other way. Even if you're good, you don't want to go the other way. And in fact, when we were, when I was at Baxter, we had two metrics about safety. One was the direction: are you getting better or are you getting worse? And the other was the absolute safety level that you're at. And if you were getting better, great. You know, if you're getting worse, even if you're good, you know, we're going to give you some focus because we don't want the slip. So those are there are two different sort of metrics that are both both important. Yeah, I think the other conversations, I, I agree with everything you're saying, I think in a lot of these topics it's a matter of maturity, right? You know, there's less maturity versus more maturity, you know, whether it's safety, whether it's compliance. If you have an organization that just started a compliance yeah. program a year ago, you're going to be relatively right. more mature. That's right. Could you say the company is bad? Sure. But at the same performance time, is bad. I wouldn't say the company is bad. The performance is bad in a particular area. Performance in that particular yeah. dimension is bad. But at the same time, it's a matter of maturity. You know, well, the company yeah. has all intentions of uh, 
doing a better job, then no, obviously it's about transparency and it's about getting better. Yeah, and execution. And what I hear from yeah. you is if you have a company that wants to be stuck forever in a very low maturity, that's probably a different question. Yeah, and I think, you know, a leader, one of the challenges, and this is something that came to me pretty early in the game, uh, one of the challenges that an effective leader in an organization has is not to show upper management that everything is going great. One of the most important ob objectives and, 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 and uh, functions of, a, of an effective leader is to create dissatisfaction in the organization. To create dissatisfaction. To tell them that, hey, we are lousy, I'm telling you, you know. You may think we're great, but you compare us with what we're doing, you look at the data, here's how we stack up. So that people then want to change. It drives change. People, they don't want to be bad. Not, very rarely do you find somebody that says, oh, you know, I really want to be bad. No, nobody wants to be bad. They want to be good. They just want to know, okay, where do I stand and how do I get from where I am to where I, I, I want to be and, and what's a path that, that'll take me there in a way that's going to keep our business rolling along. That's what they want to know. But telling them that everything is hunky-dory is the quickest way to sink your ship. It's the quickest way to really lose your job, too, because ultimately something bad is going to happen that you didn't tell anybody about. And that's what they hate the most, is being surprised. Uh, you know, it's, it's great if you have a great leader. Uh, but what if you're in a company that doesn't have a great leader? I don't know if you're, if, you're, if you're getting to that point eventually, fine, but, you know, not every company... No, that's right. That's, that's right. Absolutely. And I've gone through, you know, half a dozen different leaders. I had some really great leaders, and I had some of them were pretty lousy, to tell you the truth. But there are different ways to deal with each one. What do you, well, tell, you guys tell me, what do you do when you've got a bad leader? What do you do then? Depends at what level. You've got a bad CEO. He doesn't buy any of this stuff. What do you do? You find another company that matches your You can find another company, but let's say, <laughs> let's say for whatever reason, you're still charged with being a sustainability leader and there's still some expectation that you do something, but you know, the guy, the guy just doesn't, he doesn't understand it, he's not on board with it, yeah. Well, that was kind of the case in my company. The previous CEO was 100% dead set against it, and so you basically create a coalition that's willing below that to try to get all the presidents on board. So, so what did you do? What was that again? You create a coalition of the willing. Coalition of the willing. Very good point. Right. That's yeah. absolutely one thing that's critical is create a coalition of the willing. You find you always find somebody in your organization that's sympathetic and understands the message, right? And you just start getting those people together, and pretty before you know it, uh, and a little education, a little communication, you've got a, a, a much bigger group, crowd. It's kind of hard to ignore. You know, the, char the, the CEO doesn't always lead. Sometimes he's just ahead of the mob. And if he's trying to say, go here, and the mob is going there, he loses his leadership ability. He has to have a sense of where the mob is going because he wants to kind of channel that in some constructive ways. But if you've got the, the, the critical mass of the organization moving there, you know, it's, good CEOs can't ignore that. 